Hey, this is Ms. Saffron, and I'm going to be going over uh, human environment interaction in Southeast Asia, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica region. Um, a lot of these uh, topics that we're talking about, we've talked about in other units. Um, so some of this stuff shouldn't really be that new. Um, so first we're looking at this tiny island just off the coast of Chile uh, called Easter Island. Um, it is a Polynesian island. It's only 63 square miles. Um, and there's all these Moai statues, these big giant heads um, or even bodies that were carved out of volcanic rock. Um, we're not really sure why these were created, um, maybe as a defense to protect the island, maybe for religious reasons, but there's no information due to records being destroyed by Europeans when they came in. The settlers of this island are called the Rapa Nui tribe. Um, they are believed to have settled in between 1800 and uh, 1200, and uh, their population peaks at 15,000, um, but again, new studies are finding that maybe there was a lot more, but their uh, civilization rapidly declined with environmental factors. Uh, population is going to drop uh, tremendously when the Europeans arrive. Just like we've talked about, when Europeans go to other places or just when people go to other environments, they bring their germs and their diseases that could impact entire populations in that new place. And that's what's going to happen. Um, the Europeans are going to bring things like syphilis and smallpox, things that didn't necessarily affect them, are going to affect the natives um, of this island. <clears throat> So just giving you an idea of where Easter Island is at, um, remember the Pacific Ocean wraps around most of the globe. It takes 24 hours basically to get across the Pacific Ocean. So Easter Island is considered part of Polynesia and part of Oceania, but it's close to Latin America. It's actually not too far off the coast of Chile here, but it's kind of out in the middle by itself. Um, it's one of the most remote inhabited islands in the world. Um, and it is a territory of Chile today. So here's what it looks like. It's not very big at all. Um, and you can see all of these heads kind of wrapped around the edges right here. There is a volcano on the island, in fact, a couple volcanoes. Um, but again, the big mystery is where did these heads come from? What's the point of them? All that kind of stuff. Um, there are people that do still live on this island today. Their population is very, very small, um, about the same size as Seven Lakes High School, you could assume. Um, so there's not a whole lot of people living there, but there's a lot of science and research that is happening on this island. And just giving you an idea of what this island looks like, very lush uh, vegetation. You've got some palm trees. You've got, you know, kind of this like sandy grass going on. And then you have these uh, statues that were carved out of volcanic rock um, that if you were to go there, that you can go and see. Uh, but you can see not a whole lot going on with this island. Um, scientists and researchers believe that there was a lot more palm trees at one time um, on this island and that the deforestation of this island is going to cause the decline of that population. So again, just kind of seeing the statues with the big giant faces, um, again, we're not really sure why those were created, maybe sending a message out, maybe for defense or religious ceremonies, but that's kind of the, the mystery behind this island is what's going on with these cases and what happened to the people. So again, just kind of showing you what the land looks like. Okay, so again, not a whole lot going on. Um, even the grasses look really dry, probably can't grow a whole lot. You've got some sand um, leading out to the coast. So again, not you can't really grow um, large amounts of agriculture in environments like this. So the big question is what happened to the natives on this island? So there's several theories. Uh, one theory is deforestation. Uh, when the natives came to that island, um, they started using palm trees for different uh, resources. And when you cut down all those trees, you change up the soil content um, and can cause the vegetation to dry up. Other theories is that civil war dwindled the population. So as the population is starting to starve and maybe not have their resources, they start fighting each other and maybe killing each other off. 
And then another theory is that Europeans are going to bring diseases that also are going to kill off uh, many of the Rapa Nui people. So I would definitely go back into the Nearpod and watch those videos. They're really interesting about what possibly could have happened, talking about some theories with the Rapa Nui tribe. Um, and if you're into kind of these history mysteries, um, the Rapa Nui tribe and what happened to them and what's the deal behind the giant heads is really, really cool. Okay, the next topic is looking at natural disasters. Um, so this area of the world being that it's around the Ring of Fire. So remember the Ring of Fire is that Pacific plate that causes a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes right along uh, the western coast of South America, North America, and then into the eastern coast of Asia into Oceania. Um, and so they have to deal with a lot of natural disasters and be ready for that. One of the biggest natural disasters that they have to deal with is volcanoes. So looking at this map here of Indonesia, you can see most of that country, especially their bigger islands where most of their people live, have a lot of volcanoes. Um, and these are active volcanoes that are constantly erupting um, nonstop. And Indonesia deals with a lot of tsunamis, a lot of earthquakes because they're right on that plate boundary. So many volcanoes exist in Southeast Asia. Um, explosions lead to displacement of people or death. So when you have a volcanic explosion that could cause people to move to other parts of those countries, um, it can also cause a lot of deaths. Um, and then of course, tsunamis can be created. So if a volcano explodes, then the vibration of that explosion could cause tsunamis um, in nearby water. And then it can also change the weather. When you have volcanic ash going up into the air, um, you can have ash rain. Um, you can make it very cloudy. It can become very dark for a few days until that volcano is done erupting. So a famous volcano in um, Indonesia is Krakatoa. This is located in Indonesia between the islands of Java and Sumatra. Um, it exploded in 1883. It was a huge explosion. It killed estimated 40,000 people, uh, mainly by the tsunami that it was created. So you can see on the map here that it's on an isolated island, but when this explosion happened, uh, it was one of the loudest recorded sounds in history ever where people could hear it 3,000 miles away. So you can imagine that explosion, that what that sounded like and the shock that it's gonna cause that region. Shock waves are gonna be felt around the world. It's gonna destroy two thirds of the island of Krakatoa. So it's literally gonna explode the island. Um, and ironically, it's going to create new islands. That's the whole purpose of a volcano is bringing that magma up to the surface into lava and creating new land. So those new islands are gonna be located literally next to it. Um, and that's where we call Anka Krakatoa or Child of Krakatoa, uh, which is first seen in 1927. So here's just a map showing you um, what this all looks like. So here is the new volcano that was uh, created. Here is the old piece of land. Um, that was it that was basically exploded um, and you can definitely see where it's created uh, some new new islands so it's kind of cool that mother nature uh, does that um, you can see this volcano um, erupting and sometimes when it's just smoking like that or has ash in the air it's still erupting but it's not necessarily going to have a big explosion but notice the beaches look at the color of the beaches that is all volcanic ash um, in the beaches, if you watch the movie Moana, you'll also notice that there's uh, black beaches. That is that volcanic sand right there. Um, very fertile soil, but that can only come from uh, volcanic activity. So here's what Mount Krakatoa looks like. Krakatoa. And then yes, you can go hiking on volcanoes which a lot of thrill seekers like to do, get up close to volcanoes. Um, there was actually a um, volcano that exploded in New Zealand not too long ago that people were hiking on when it erupted. And that's the thing with volcanoes is you can only predict so much. And um, 
you know, seismologists can uh, have the data, they can predict when it's going to erupt, but as far as the exact knowledge of when an eruption is going to happen is sometimes unknown. So another thing that um, this area has to deal with is tsunamis. So tsunami is caused by tectonic activity or plate tectonic activity that happens underwater. So it's when you have an earthquake that is below the surface of water and creates these ginormous waves, the shocks uh, create waves. Uh, so places like Japan, Indonesia, the Philippines, New Zealand, um, even places like California, Washington State, Oregon, they have to deal with tsunamis and they're very unexpected. They're very hard to predict. Um, and it's also very hard to predict how big those waves are going to be. Um, so on uh, the day after Christmas in 2004 in Indonesia, there was a giant tsunami that pretty much wiped out entire islands um, in Indonesia. So you can see this first picture and then the last picture um, where just this big wall of water comes up over uh, the land and literally shifts boats into neighborhoods moves houses, uh, creates a lot of havoc, and you don't have a lot of time to get out when a tsunami hits. So here's just some pictures in Indonesia after that tsunami. So again, why there's a boat in the middle of a neighborhood, you can guess that uh, you know a tsunami had caused that. And you can already see that this area is not the most developed, it's not the richest area, and they have to deal with that constantly. All right, the last topic is looking at introducing new species in Australia. I would definitely uh, read this article. I'll just go over a little bit of what it's about. Um, so Australia is an island continent, um, and anytime you have islands, there's very specific plant life and animal life that is there on that island before humans come in and start exchanging uh, plants and animals. And so the idea of introducing species, um, introduced species are living things brought to non-native environments. So when Europeans come to settle, they bring their livestock, they bring their crops, they bring things like animals. Um, that's going to change the environment on a continent and that could wreak havoc on uh, the soil, that could wreak havoc on the animals that are already there. Um, and so it becomes an issue because now you can hurt your food supply um, and then you can also endanger the native species that are supposed to be there. So I would definitely read through this. Um, one of the examples is the wild rabbits that Europeans brought uh, to Australia and how that's going to change uh, that ecosystem there. So that is your HEI presentation. Um, make sure that you go through the Nearpod, try the questions, watch the videos. That way you are very prepared for your quiz. Thanks for watching. Bye.